On October 12th, 2021, one year ago today, Mercenaries was added to the Hearthstone game client. There was a lot of hype surrounding this mode. Blizzard put a decent amount of effort into getting some marketing going for it and really launched some fancy, shiny new pre-order bundles. Mercenaries was advertised as Hearthstone's take on an RPG experience with roguelike mechanics. Hearthstone had done PvE content before in the past through adventures, dungeon runs, boom lab puzzles, and most recently, the Book of Mercenaries. Hearthstone had always been a traditionally PvP focused game though, and this felt like their first major attempt at bringing in a new mode that was focused around a PvE experience that also offered PvP, much like constructed in other formats, in the same mode. Many of you are probably aware that the launch for Mercenaries did not go exactly how Blizzard planned it to go. And there are a number of reasons for that. And that is actually going to be a large part of what this video is about. Today, we're taking a look at what the most requested features for Mercenaries were at launch and where we stand on those issues one year later. This video hopes to provide some perspective on where we started, where we are now, and where we will hopefully be heading towards in the future. So whether you're brand new to Mercenaries or you've been around since launch like me, Hopefully this video provides some very interesting information and insight into Blizzard's latest new Hearthstone mode. This is a new type of video content I want to experiment with more in the future. It requires a lot more editing, planning, all that stuff. If you like it, let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. So we're going to list off some bullet points here of what I believe to be the most requested features for Hearthstone Mercenaries at the time of its launch and shortly afterwards. I'm going to lay out all of these topics here and then we're going to dive into each one of them a bit more deeply. So the most requested features and improvements for Hearthstone Mercenaries at launch were extra coins being fixed, more content, a PvE endgame system, improving the very long grind to level up your characters, and PvP accessibility and balance. We are going to start off with probably the biggest issue in Hearthstone Mercenaries, that was the extra coins. So for anyone unaware, Mercenaries uses a coin system in order to level up your characters and even craft characters that you do not currently have. You earn coins by doing things in the game like completing bounties, completing tasks, and playing in PvP. A big problem that was noticed very early on in Mercenaries was once you got enough coins to fully level up a character, the coins you were getting for them after that were essentially useless. This was very problematic as it made the pack opening experience very, very bad. As unlike in Standard, where if you already owned all copies of a card, you could just dust your extras and get other cards or other resources to get cards you wanted. There was no such system in Mercenaries. This became by far the biggest issue in the community at the time and something players felt needed to be addressed as soon as possible. Given that the ways of targeting specific coins for Mercenaries were rather limited and somewhat RNG dependent, it compounded on this issue and made it feel extra bad when people were trying to farm bounties to level up characters they wanted to progress and were instead sometimes given coins that were essentially useless for characters they had already put a lot of time and effort into maxing out. We have heard numerous times from Blizzard that a change and fix for excess coins had been in the works. However, it did not seem to be coming quickly. And even as of the recording of this video, an excess coin change has not currently been implemented into Hearthstone Mercenaries. That being said, there was an announcement a few months back that a coin conversion system would be in the works. And even prior to that, it was mentioned that excess coins would have some kind of use for helping to power up your already maxed out characters in eventual PvE endgame content. 
in the time leading up to this most recent patch release, we were made aware that the excess coin fix finally has a date and will be coming to mercenaries in the following patch 24.6, which is expected to drop in late October or early November of this year. We don't know too much about the specifics of this. However, what we do know is this patch will be implementing a new resource, one that can be obtained by exchanging your excess coins to receive it. And then that new resource can be used either for the eventual PVE endgame content or to be converted into into coins for mercenaries that you have which are not currently maxed out. We will have to wait and see just exactly how this system works when it comes in the following patch. But given how long it took, I had long given up on the hope of them ever implementing a proper exchange system. This has the potential to be a huge boon for the mode and especially reward longtime players who have literally hundreds of thousands of excess coins sitting around. I would like to think that Blizzard knows the importance of getting an update like this correctly, as this has been by far the most requested feature since the very beginning of the game one year ago. They should know that this is not something that can be messed up upon release and fixed later, much like the initial launch of the game. That being said, even though I understand they probably went through a lot of iterations to arrive on a system that they felt was optimal and good, to me, I do not think the amount of time it has taken to get to that point is justifiable. It's fantastic that this is coming to the game very soon, but frankly, it should have never taken this long to get such a sorely needed addition to a very flawed game mechanic and system. The next big issue with Hearthstone Mercenaries at launch was a lack of content. Overall, though there was a decent amount of PvE bounties to go through when the game came out, a lot of players ended up finishing them all within the first week or two, and after that there really wasn't much point to doing PvE aside from grinding the same bounties over and over again to get coins to max out your characters. On top of that, there really wasn't anything to do with your characters in PvE once you max them all out aside from going to play pvp this is something that did improve pretty greatly throughout this year we got a lot more pve content added over time with improved rewards that made it easier to acquire more coins for newly released mercenaries additionally mercenaries started out with having a new drop every single month that would drop a handful of new mercs as well as some bounties to go with them eventually this release cycle did get changed around the start of this most recent Hearthstone year, where they opted to go for a big release every mini set in the 0.4 patches rather than doing the smaller monthly content releases. This change did have some pros and cons to it, but overall was received fairly well by the community. Personally, I think the sweet spot for Mercenaries releases lies somewhere in between the monthly drops, which many players felt were too quick, and the mini set patch drops, which can sometimes take a bit too long. On top of that, new limited time events were added to Mercenaries. This introduced a new character and gave you daily tasks to complete that would reward you with the character, coins for it, and other recently released Mercenaries, as well as diamond portraits which were very hard to acquire through other normal means. So far there have been a total of six mercenaries events so that averages out to about one event every two months. I think events are one of the strongest things mercenaries has added in terms of new content. I think if they can get them out a little bit more consistently they will be a great source of bringing in new players and giving good content to existing players. The amount of mercenaries we have to collect and grind up has also over doubled since the mode released one year ago, launching with just over 50 mercenaries and as of today we are at 114 total mercs. Overall, adding additional content is one of the things I view more positively in mercenaries and I think it has generally been a good job during this first year, even though there are some things I would still like to see they're not currently implemented in the game. The biggest piece of content that people have been wanting but remains missing is a PvE endgame. Some kind of way to make use of all your maxed out characters in PvE content. I gave this one its own section as this has been a very widely requested feature since the mode first came out and it has been talked about for a long time. Initially the PvE endgame system was supposed to launch late this year. However a few 
few months ago, we got a development update stating that PvE Endgame had been delayed until early next year. It does feel like a lot of the work that has gone into this PvE Endgame has taken away a bit from some of the PvE focused content throughout this year. Though recently we did get a very large number of bounties, I noticed we stopped getting as many bounties during smaller events like the event mercenaries with the old gods. PvE Endgame system is very important as there are a lot of players who play mercenaries who are mainly in it for the collecting, leveling, and playing the PvE content. So it's very important that you give them something to do and some goals to grind for once they have finished the daunting task of maxing out all their characters. This is also important because it can allow for certain characters to have uses that they would not otherwise have in regular PvE or in PvP. Given that challenging PvE grinding is often a selling point to many roguelike players, this is something that the mode sorely lacks and very much needs as soon as possible. I am hopeful that much like with the excess coins delay, they realize the importance of getting a PvE endgame system right on the first try around as it could be a very do or die moment for the mode. Mercenaries has a lot of shortcomings to its PvE system. Most notably, the replayability factor is rather low. This is a pretty bad thing to have in a roguelike focused game, or one that's trying to be, and I'm going to be doing a whole video devoted on this topic later this month talking about where Mercenaries has fallen short of other games in the genre. Endgame is a chance to rectify this and set this on a more proper path for being the game they claim they want it to be. We will have to wait until it drops just to see how that turns out, and I have a feeling we will be seeing it early on next year around the time of the next Mercenaries drop and regular Hearthstone mini set which usually happens in mid-February. As someone who has never been into mercenaries primarily for the PvE element, I really hope they give us a good, interesting, entertaining way to use our characters in PvE and actually feel challenged like we have something that is rewarding for putting our full collection to use. Another very important topic that people wanted to see improved was improving the general grind. It is no secret that Mercenaries was notoriously grindy, and more importantly that this grind wasn't particularly fun for a lot of players. Early on in the game's life cycle, it was discovered that the most effective way to grind coins was to get tasks via a mysterious stranger, and the easiest way to do that was to do an early heroic bounty, air elemental, over and over again to farm the new tasks. This was not a quick grind, however, it was slightly faster than the normal methods they intended players progressing through the game. Blizzard nerfed this method within two weeks of release. This was a huge misstep for the game and put off tons of potential people who were interested in playing PvP. The grind for Air Elemental was already daunting on its own, and this nerf pushed people over the edge and decided that the grind was not worth their time investment. There was much backlash about this change, and claims that Blizzard would be monitoring feedback about it, however, nothing came of it. There were some improvements along the way though. Probably the biggest change Mercenaries has ever received in terms of speeding up the grind was the change to Mysterious Strangers and Tasks. This was one of the best things the game ever did. At launch, you wanted to level up a mercenary and get coins for it by completing their task challenges, you would have to go and get their task. The ways this could be acquired were you would get a fresh set of tasks every day on the bounty board, or you could go to a mystery node in bounties and you would have a chance to get a mysterious stranger who would let you pick one of three mercenaries in your party to get a task for. During release, once you got a task and completed it, that task spot would be returned to being blank and you would have to wait for a new one tomorrow or farm up another stranger if you wanted to continue that character's task. This made it insanely grindy if you wanted to complete all of a character's task levels, which was the most efficient way 
of farming specific coins for a character. This system did get changed though. The mysterious stranger's appearance rate was pretty heavily nerfed. However, to compensate for this, tasks would automatically progress once you got the first task in a chain. So for example, if I got Kazakus's task one and I completed it, it would automatically give me access to his task two. And this would continue all the way up until task 18. As someone who grinded under the old system, this was a night and day difference and severely reduced the amount of time it took to grind up new mercenaries. One big misstep about this change though was the time between the air elemental nerf and this improvement. I think they could have saved a lot of goodwill and prevented people from leaving the game if instead of nerfing air elemental initially and giving nothing to players to make up for it, they implemented this task change around the same time or shortly afterwards. It was also announced that at some point down the line, another improvement towards the task system was coming. However, we haven't heard any information on that since. Another aspect that improved about the grind was Merc's tasks themselves were made less needlessly grindy. At launch, there were a handful of character tasks that were notorious for taking way more time and effort and not being easily completable through normal gameplay. A few months down the line, this changed. I believe it was with the first big mercenaries drop after the release cadence change, where it became a lot easier to get through a mercenary's tasks. They weren't as grindy and you could actually line them up with one another so you could complete a ton of tasks for different characters all at the same time. This was a huge boost to making the grind a much less grueling and unenjoyable experience and was simply a net positive for the game overall. They have also improved some of the old mercenaries tasks that were more challenging and needlessly grindy. However, some of them still are rather difficult compared to how easy these new ones are. Blizzard made a pretty big mistake with the marketing of this game really pushing those mercenary pre-orders before launch. This seemed to work out very well for them financially, but did some long-term damage to the perception of the game. Many players saw such expensive pre-orders as Blizzard basically saying that mercenaries was going to be similarly expensive as constructed was to keep up with. Ironically, this isn't really true as the game is actually quite free to play friendly if you're willing to put some time into grinding the PvE mode. I would argue that Mercenaries is actually the easiest mode in Hearthstone to get a full collection without spending any money on it. It will take time and effort, but it is actually very possible to do, see, and obtain everything this game mode has to offer without spending a dime. The last section here is on PvP accessibility and balance. Right from the beginning, Blizzard made it clear that they did not have many intentions for nerfing characters in Mercenaries. They explicitly stated that they did not mind if a character was overpowered in PvE and would be taking a more lax approach to balancing power outliers in PvP, though they would step in if absolutely necessary. So far, they have remained fairly steady on this design philosophy, though they have started to regularly introduce buffs to underpowered characters. There have been a few nerfs disguised as bug fixes to help rein in some powerful characters, but none of these had a major impact on the characters, such as removing them from play in PvP. There was one very significant rework early on in the game's life cycle, and that was to Varden Dawngrasp. This character was very consistent at slowing every one of your opponent's mercenaries and also had a very powerful AoE effect that could lock opponents out of their turn. Their first ability and death rattle were redesigned and tweaked so that their slowing effects were less consistent and their death rattle freeze would not lock characters out for more than one turn. This was a good and necessary change to the mode overall. However, I find it very surprising they have not done similar reworks for other possibly more overpowered characters such as Valera and Trigor. 
the buffs for characters have overall been mostly very positive for the game, though Trigor does stand out as a sore thumb that was perhaps too over buffed. Since then, it seems they have been a bit more precautious with buffs, and no character has really risen to power like Trigor did pre and post buff. I think buffs are a great thing for the game, and they should really strive to make more of the unplayable mercenaries viable, or at least fringe usable in PvP. The launch mercs especially suffer from this. The design philosophy for mercenaries at launch seems very different with other designs we got over time. There is a very real sense of power creep, and a lot of the launch characters have a very tough time keeping up with it. I am hopeful that once we have a way to spend our excess coins, maybe we can see a change in philosophy to have more nerfs or reworks in the future. I think the stance that Blizzard only wanting to buff characters is not a sustainable one, and eventually they will have to bite the bullet and admit that some characters need to be nerfed or reworked for the future health of the game. Overall, since launch, PvP has certainly had its ups and downs. Good metas, bad metas, and some in between. I do feel more recently, between the last drop and this most recent one, things are trending in a more positive direction. There is more variety in the amount of teams that can be played, and I'm hoping that continues to happen as we get more characters and buffs added to the game. It feels that their design philosophy for characters, specifically for PvP, has improved greatly in the last year, especially with this most recent drop, and it makes me optimistic about the designs of future new mercenaries. One important thing I have to mention about the PvP scene is there is a big botting issue. I'm not going to go too in depth on this as I've done different videos covering it before. You can check those out if you want a more in detail explanation, but Blizzard made a change about a month or two into the mode's life to try and make rewards more attainable for PVP players. This change had a very negative consequence to the MMR and ladder system and enabled bots to be able to effectively grind up the ladder more efficiently than any other real player ever could. This has been an issue that we have brought up to Blizzard numerous times at this point. However, sadly, they do not have a great track record with taking such problems in Hearthstone seriously. The botting issue is a serious problem for the PvP element of the mode, and it severely needs to be fixed changed, remedied in some way, they ever want PvP to be taken more seriously by the broader Hearthstone community. The other thing that has been damaging to my favorite part of this mode, PvP, has been a lack of accessibility. We've talked about this on my channel and on the podcast since day one. It has gotten a bit better, but there is still a very large barrier to entry for a lot of players who want to play Mercenaries PvP. I started this video pointing out that Hearthstone traditionally is a PvP focused game, and there were a lot of players on Mercenaries release who were actually very excited to see Hearthstone's take on a Pokemon-esque PvP system. The gameplay in PvP is great, and it's one of my favorite PvP aspects of the Hearthstone client. However, it can be very hard to recommend this to people because those who just want to experience that PvP have to do an insane amount of PvE grinding when that is not necessarily the type of content that they want to be putting their time and effort into. I've been a long advocate for providing some kind of way to make PvP more accessible, such as auto-scaling mercenaries up or a casual queue mode where people can just press the button and play, much like Battlegrounds. I think this would bring a lot of new players in the mode and get them hooked on what is, in my opinion, the best part of Hearthstone Mercenaries. The lack of accessibility, balancing, and botting issues have done a lot of damage to what has the potential to be a great addition to the Hearthstone client and has scared off many creators and players both new and old. And that is truly unfortunate. PvP actually feels like it's in a pretty great place right now with the most recent Mercs drop. But it's hard to get other new players or potential new players to see that because of the insane amount of grind they have to do 
in order to experience it. I think the best thing the mode could possibly do is find a way to allow people to choose what part of the mode they want to play without making them so intertwined where any potential new PvP player has to grind through all this PvE content that may not be their type of thing. PvE can be experienced entirely without ever touching PvP, and I think they should find some kind of way to allow the same for PvP interested players. Something I realized very early on about Mercenaries was it felt like a game that was not ready to release. It's no secret that its release date got pushed back multiple times. To me, it feels like Mercenaries launched in a very early alpha or beta state that did not have the quality we come to expect from a large, successful, multi-billion dollar company such as Blizzard. It never officially got the beta tag like Duels or Battlegrounds, but I have a feeling they were too afraid to slap the beta tag on and trying to get people to pre-order anywhere from 30 to over $100 for the game mode prior to its launch. It doesn't help that 2021 was not a great year for Activision Blizzard to say the least. Numerous very concerning scandals coming up along the way tarnishing its reputation. Releasing such a half-baked product when goodwill was at an all-time low for the company seems to have been a big mistake that has harmed the mode in the long term. In the greater Hearthstone community, overall, I realized this very early on that it felt like the game was in an early beta state. And that's basically what I treated this first year as. And now, one year in, it feels like we're kind of almost at where we should have been when the game fully launched one year ago. It's disappointing that this was the route that was taken for what I believe could have been a very successful game upon release that could have added a lot of interest and value to the Hearthstone game client. There have been a lot of improvements over the past year, but they have taken far too long to come to the game. It's not impossible to recover from mistakes like this. However, it is a very challenging uphill battle, and they really need to make sure that this excess coin fix and the PvE endgame system are slam dunks if they want this mode to ever reach its full potential. We've seen them turn it around before with modes like duels, which started out as kind of a joke and has become a more loved mode in more recent years by much of the community. I am hopeful that something similar will happen with mercenaries they take the proper steps needed to let the mode shine and realize its true potential with the larger hearthstone player base overall i really care for the community around this game and think there is something quite great to a lot of what it's trying to do it just needs more time and effort put into it to realize that full potential and i think this coming year is going to be the real test to see if they can realize that full potential or if it'll remain in a shadow of what it could have been rather than what it is. I hope this was informative and gave you pr some perspective about the game, whether you're a new player, someone who quit at launch, never touched mercenaries, or has been here for most of the ride like myself. I am hopeful that this will have been the first and most challenging year for the mode and that it can greatly improve and thrive from here, assuming the next correct steps are taken. I would love to hear from you in the comments below about what your experience has been in the mode and what you thought of this video. That is going to wrap it up for Mercenaries one year later. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.